All right, so at this point, I've uh, taken a moment to save all of the sizes of my project. I've saved them into my folder. These, of course, are the different dimensions that could be usable on the different devices, and most likely, we will get different sized versions as we get different sizes of Android devices. So. You want to make sure you've got your items saved there in that res folder. Now, you might have noticed, I didn't really mention it, but you might have noticed as you were making your icons smaller and smaller, at a certain point, maybe they look too small or too weird. Um, that's another aspect of um, designing this stuff, because let's say right here I'm 36 sized. I can't quite tell anymore what that is. So if I know that I'm going to make my icons those smaller sizes, perhaps I would take some time to craft an icon that looks better at that size. Maybe I wouldn't put that extra little white um, trophy inside of the big trophy, because at a certain point it gets lost. It's hard to see. So you see that also. On some devices that are much smaller, the icon is devised in a way that really works on the small device. And then on, on a larger device, the icon is devised so that it looks better on that larger device. I'm not going to sweat it, but that's just uh, something to think about. I'm saving, I've saved all of these to my project folder. Uh, I'm going to minimize Photoshop, and now it's time to start editing our config XML file. So I don't need to get into Cordova yet, command prompt. I've saved them into the folder, name them whatever you want. We call them icon size. They're all saved in the res Android folder. We're going to go to edit the config XML file, which remember is inside of the uh, the main root of the folder. So I'm going to back up to the top level of this project, the my SDCE folder, you will see config XML. So let's go ahead and right click, edit notepad, the config XML file. We've got a built-in section, platform, name, Android. We've already got that section. We've also got platform, name, iOS. So built-in, we've got an area where we can start to add our icons. So my handout should then say, edit the project file and uh, add the following inside of the platform section. So uh, we can try copying and pasting for some reason it doesn't let me select, so I might have to type it manually. But I'm going to say, uh, it shouldn't matter where we add it, but I'm going to add it after allow intent market. So we've got preference of min SDK, target SDK, market, so line 25. Let's add a new line 25. We're going to then add the skeleton of our code, which is icon src equals quotes density equals this is the skeleton of that bit of code that we will reuse I'm going to copy and paste it in a moment I'm going to save myself a little bit more typing by adding a little bit more if I were to copy, oops, that should be icon, not ico, sorry about that, icon, um, icon, src density. Um, we then need to point to where the icon is based on the location of the config file. Remember, the config file is at the top root. So my example here says, then we type res slash android slash icon 36 ping, because that's the root path inside of source. Res slash android slash icon 36 dot png ping. We have to further tell the app, well, this is designed for the low DPI, the low quality, basically. The low quality phones. Next we will do the medium, high quality, 
extra high quality, extra, extra high quality, extra, extra, extra high quality. So here's L DPI. At this point, now I would copy this line and paste it five more times because then I only need to change the name of the icon file and the, and the one letter or two of the density. So that will be my time saver. Make sure that this line of code, um, just to confirm, you need a space right there. Density equals quotes space slash. It's a self-closing tag. It does not have a pair. So we close it like this. We do have to have this space slash at the end. According to the specification and my own work, I tried to omit it and my app didn't work. So you do need a space slash. That whole line, line 25, I'm going to copy it and paste it one, two, three, four, five more times. I want six in total because I've got six icon sizes. Low, medium, high, extra high, extra, extra, extra high. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 36. The next one coming up is 48 icon 48.ping and that is our mdpi medium dots per inch medium quality the next one is 72 icon 72 hdpi Ninety-six icon ninety-six, and then X H D P I one forty-four X X H D P I finally one ninety-two. Triple X H. My instructions then say once you've uh, added this, you need to save the file, of course. Cordova run Android or Cordova emulate Android or actually Cordova run browser will not work because you don't see this icon either run Android or emulate Android once you load it up then you have to exit the app in the device and go to your apps and you will see the icon remember you see this we're, we're editing the icon that is part of the app so let's run it in our device uh, if, if you haven't launched it yet I haven't you need to get into node command prompt as always navigate to your project file and then run or emulate Android and then let's see our result so I'm going to use the shortcut remember the shortcut you can hold shift and right click a window shift I mean uh, a folder shift right click a folder open command window here I want to CD, CD, CD. I just want to jump to the folder. So shift, right click, command window, open command window here. Be with you one moment. So give that a try. Cordova, I'm going to do Cordova emulate. Android. I'm going to wait a moment and see, see my project load up.
Which part that you are not really doing? My SCDs? Yes, exactly. Where should it show up? It should show up on the map. Yeah, it should show up on the map. Let's go. Solution is horrible. Mm -hmm. I picked a horrible blank on my 
I think I changed my phone. Of course, you did. I, mean, I, I looked at the wrong place. I had that. I went in there. Yeah, I wouldn't, worry. I wouldn't worry about it because we will tell it exactly what specs we want. I don't know why I chose one for you, but we'll take one in. But that's what I suppose you say. Uh, I used to be the one here, just 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 in case, putting it in case I'm in the cash. Okay, everyone, so let me mention something that might be useful to you since I've said it to a lot of people, and, and it might be useful to you since I didn't say it to you. It looks like, so my concept is that when I go look at it here, it's supposed to have my icon. There's my icon. Obviously, I always make it look so easy, right? But for a lot of you, it didn't, it didn't show your icon right away. So it looks like what you would need to do first to kind of wake it up is I 
tapped and I clicked on it and I held it and then I dropped it on uninstall. So under uninstall, sometimes then it, it would appear. But then I would click OK to fully uninstall it. So I would remove it from the device, virtual or real, and then emulate it again or run it again and then that seemed to wake it up. Um, so I didn't have to do it, it worked on mine, but for a lot of you, you had to do that. And so the point of it is, no, you're not going to see it on the app itself, that's not what we're editing. We're editing the app icon. So we saw that when we went into the app drawer here, there it is, it's alphabetical, the project is called My SDCE, and so uh, it shows up, it shows up right there. So there's my icon, this particular device, I believe it's tapping into either the LDPI version or the MDPI version, one of the lower quality ones. If we had a higher quality Android device, it would use the higher quality icon. That's the point. We've developed an icon for our app, so it doesn't look like the generic Cordova icon anymore. And all of these little details add up. It's the totality of your app. Does it function properly? Does it look good? Etc. So do you notice that when we when we launch the app for the first time, it, it you see a um, you see a splash screen that should be the Cordova icon. So that's the next part of the handout, and we're getting close to the uh, to the next break. But we'll do what we're going to do now is we're going to add the the splash screen. We spent time working on the icon. Let's start talking about the splash screen. So what I mean is this. You might not have noticed that you might have started to block it out, but when I launch my app for the first time, like that, you see we still have that Cordova mascot icon. I want to remove that. I want to have a new graphic for that, a new splash screen. So my handout here, it's going to be the same sort of idea. We're going to create six 24-bit pings like before, the difference here is no transparency because that graphic is going to load on top of your current graphics and if it's transparent you're going to see through the splash screen to see your home screen. So no transparency in that ping. And either portrait or landscape orientation but because we've locked our project to be portrait, we're, we're not going to make any landscape uh, any landscape splash screens. The, the app is never going to load landscape. It's always going to be portrait. So I only listed the portraits. But obviously, if you want to do landscape, you just flip these values. So for landscape, it'll be 1920 by 1280 instead of 1280 by 1920. So it's always with height, with height. So we're going to design some quick graphics. Um, to use our splash screen and we're going to save them of course into the res folder and we're going to add a little bit extra icons here this time splash instead of icon and a couple extra lines so I've still got Photoshop open hopefully you do as well we're going to reuse this graphic as part of our splash screen we're going to make this graphic up here as, a, as well as other text so that's why I also designed it in the large size so here's how we'll do this. I'm, I'm in Photoshop. I've still got my graphic open. Does everyone have their original graphics still open? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's confirm that your current graphic is saved. I've got a little asterisk I haven't saved. So just to confirm, everyone go to save, file save. I've saved my current project, my icon. Let's go up to image menu and select near the middle, duplicate. Let's select duplicate. We're going to duplicate this current project to be our brand new splash screen. And it says, what name would you like? Let's call this Splash 1920. Actually, no, Splash 1280. Simply because my handout here says we're going to use, oh, well, um, yeah, 1920. Splash 1920, the largest dimension. So we're duplicating. We're starting with the with the um, 512 size icon. Then we're duplicating it. Splash 1920. 
this is not the right dimensions or the right size or the right proportions or anything. So we'll go up to the image menu, image size. I'm going to change the size of this image. It's 512. So we'll go up to image menu, image size. This is my original size. We went back to inches, maybe pixels. So change the width to pixels. And this is one of the things that I can't exactly say, always do it this way. We're going to use logic. But what we're doing here is we're starting with a certain size, which we're then will change to another size. 1280. If you change that to 1280, um, the height also becomes 1280. Well, if you take off this lock, don't do this yet, but if you take off this lock, See, it's locked together. If I take off the lock, then I could do each dimension independently, 1280 by 1920. But again, don't do this, because this is going to stretch it. It's not going to be in proportion. It's going to force it into those dimensions, but that's not going to be in proportion anymore. Now it's starting to look a little too tall. So we're, we're going to we are going to start with 1280 and then I'm going to add more space to give me a height of 1920. If I were to do 1920 here, I'd have to crop edges to get down to 1280. So if I have it at 1280 here, I just have to add to the top and to the bottom instead of cutting. Well, it is based on the dimensions that are in my handout, which come from the documentation. So on, on the splash screen section, it tells you right here, 200, 320, 480, 720, 1280. So it's just that I'm choosing these sizes that I have to choose because of the documentation. Oh, but, no, I mean, um, you said you're going to start off the 1280 and then you're going to, you know, increase it or decrease it. Mm -hmm. But why don't you start on 800? Because 800 seems like it's between the, you know, it's between the two, which is the, uh, between the two large and small number, between 220 and 320. You know, that could work, actually. It could work to start off at that other size and then increase it. There's many ways to do this. That's why I don't have an exact way to do it on my handout, because there's different ways to do it. This is just one way to do it, and it might be interesting to do it the way that you're saying and just to compare. I'm going to do it this way, and maybe the result will be the same. I haven't tried it, but it might be a good idea to try both. Mm -hmm. So we'll do with uh, 1280, and we'll click OK. Now, you might have been worried for a moment. That little preview was showing that it was going to increase the size, and the little preview was looking blurry. And didn't I say earlier today that it's not a good idea to take a small picture to make it a large picture? That's true, with the exception of what we did here. Uh, we work with these kinds of graphics, which are known as vector graphics, not victor graphics, vector graphics. And vector graphics usually then are the shapes that don't lose quality when you grow them or shrink them. If we had drawn this, uh, shapes with my regular old brush tool. It's no longer a vector graphic, it's a raster graphic. The point of that is that if then I had drawn it with the plain old brush tool and made it larger, it will look blurry and fuzzy and bad and amateur. But we drew it with these shapes, which are vector, which are always high quality. So I made it large, and look at that, nice sharp edges, like I want. So that's a deeper discussion, vector and vector versus raster images. But the point is, if you draw your graphics as vector images, they should always be high quality, no matter the size. So I've got a larger sized... Oh, I zoomed out there, I forgot to mention. Um, 
you can do it different ways, but uh, on your keyboard, my, the way that I like to do it, the fast way, hold control and then click and then tap minus and that zooms you out, or control and plus and that zooms you in. Anyway, we resize this to the higher quality and it's 1280 wide, but it's not 1920 tall yet. So we'll go back to the image menu. And we were at image size, which takes what currently exists and either grows it or shrinks it. And instead, what we want now is canvas size, which either adds to or deletes from the picture. So image size grows and shrinks it. Canvas size adds to it or deletes from it. Go to image, canvas size goes back to inches, make sure it's on pixels. It says you've got a height of 1280, that's nice, but now I want a height of 1920. So you see here it's showing that from the center of my graphic it's going to expand and give me 1920 height. Actually half of 1920 above and half below. Not all 1920 pixels on the top or whatever. It's half on the top, half on the bottom. Because that's what it's saying here. From the center, give me an equal amount up and down. If I click down here, it would give me those extra pixels only above. Or here, only below. So in short, just keep it in the center. That's the default. We're adding more pixels on the top and the bottom to give us 1920 tall. OK. There we go. So now it's a tall graphic, just like our smartphones. Uh, here we can get a little artistic. I'm going to move these up a little bit. And then we have a text tool right here, this little T. We've got the space now for a graphic and some text. So with the text tool, you can have all the choices of fonts, no limitation. You can click the text tool and click to start writing text. But I would say before you write any text, look at the top. You've got your options, font, uh, font family, font size, alignment, color. I'm going to say start at on the size here, on the font size in the middle. Here, start on the largest size first. You don't know what it looks like until you actually add it. And you've got all of these cool fonts to work with. So I'm going to select some font, really big size, and also here alignment. Just like word, left, center, right. My SDC. The font size only goes to 72, but you can type, for example, 100. Probably going to need a pretty big size. 500? So let me give you a moment to um, get a little artistic with now creating a splash screen. Actually, before we get too much further, let's save this. Right now it's still temporary. Let's save this as a PSD file. Notice at the top we've got icon.psd and splash, but it doesn't have an extension. It's in memory. It hasn't been saved. So if the power goes out, you're going to lose this. 
let's go to file save as I'm going to save it on my flash drive calling it splash 1920.psd we'll save your file and then let me give you a couple of minutes to maybe get creative here and then we will do the next steps of saving this as a PNG and then moving on. Okay, so uh, obviously you can further refine this, but I'm going to move on. Uh, let's say this is going to be pretty good for my splash screen. So I'm going to save. And now we'll do the same as before what we did with the icon. We'll go to File, Export, Save for Web. So the dimensions down here should be correct. 1920. It's ping 24, just like my instructions say, but my instructions say no transparency. So turn off transparency. We want a plain white background. If we wanted a different color, we could do that. We could have we'd have to go back and edit it in 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 the editor, but let's just say for the moment a plain white background, and then my icon's gonna be on top of it, like that. Looks okay. But um, ping 24, no transparency, correct size. Go ahead and save. It's still remembered, hopefully, that you're saving into your Android folder, Splash 1920. So go ahead and save. And you would think, well, now we do the same thing that we did for the icon, where we just decrease the size, image size here. Unfortunately, we cannot because there's some weirdness about the Android dimensions, that they're not in proportion to each other. So what I'm saying is that my instructions say next we'll do the 960 by 1440, <laughs> but if we were try if we went back to Safer Web and we did width of 960, in this case 1440 did show up, but you can't assume that it will always work, unfortunately when you go into these different dimensions, the dimensions might be off a little bit, so we'll get to them as necessary. What I'm saying is, let's go back to File, Export, Save for Web. Let's change our image size here with 960. It should automatically go then to 1440 height. We'll do Save. We'll save it as Splash 1440. I'm saving 1920, 1440. I'll do the next one. I believe the next one will prove my point about the proportions being weird, so we'll, we'll get to that. But go ahead, uh, go ahead and save this. 
splash 1440. Okay, so here's here's what I meant. When we get to the 720, my instructions say that should be 720 by 1280. And when I go here and, and do 720, it becomes 1080. I'm missing 200 pixels. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could turn off that little uh, link and then force it to be 1280. The problem is that it will stretch it. In this case maybe it's not so bad, but most of the time it, it won't look so good stretched. So that's one way. Force it into the right shape. I usually wouldn't do it. Instead we have to do a couple of extra steps. I'm gonna cancel that. I will do this the manual way. I will go up to Image Menu, Image Size, Width of 720, click OK, and then Image Menu, Canvas Size, and we'll add the pixels that are missing. We've got 720 and it should be 1280. We've got 1080. So we will add a height of 1280. And that'll add 100 pixels on top, 100 pixels on bottom. And now I'll go back to Safe for Web and save it. It's already down here, correct? 720? 1280. But, um, excuse me, like when you say like 720, are you uh, choosing the canvas size or did you choose uh, the image size? I had to do both. I had to do image size to shrink it to 720, and then I had to do canvas size to grow it to 1280. Yeah, let me go over. Let me go over your shoulder. What was the last uh, thing that you did? Okay, um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Let's go to image size first. Okay. This is perfect here, so okay. And now we're we're gonna go back to image. Height. Height, we have to change that to twelve eighty because we've got the It doesn't matter. We could add the first value we, because here that's also 1280. Mm -hmm. So if we say that one is 1280, So it doesn't matter. We could use the first number or the second number. Um, I think we've been using 1280 and 1960, so it should stay with the 720. It should stay with the one. No, so far we've been using 1920, 1440, and 1280. But either one will work. Okay.
to um, right now I'm only saving a graphic called splash 320 I could save a graphic called splash dash landscape dash 320 because I'm going to need a graphic for the vertical one and the horizontal one so I just simply make another graphic one for portrait one for landscape I can call them whatever I want a whole new set a whole landscape. new six exactly six for landscape six for portrait and it, will, it knows automatically when you click yeah so here I'm doing 480 by 800 um, what we could do okay so um, with the next size we need to go up to image size 480 so we'll go to the image menu, image size 480, then it's too big, it's 480 by 853, I only need 800. So again, we're going to use both image size and then canvas size. Image size to get me the general size and then canvas size for the specific. So with the 480 on image size, and then image canvas size, Now we need to shave off a few pixels, 27 pixels, 26 and a half pixels, so 800 height, and it will automatically remove enough on the top and the bottom. It's going to confirm, are you sure you want to make it smaller? Because we've always been adding to it on canvas, and now we're going to remove, so it just wants to confirm, are you sure you want to make the current size smaller, the current canvas size smaller? Yes, proceed. And I've got my next dimension. Four eighty by eight hundred. Splash eight hundred. Now you try to do the last, uh, the last two. Four eighty and three twenty. So give that a try. Call me over if you need a little help. But we want to get all of those dimensions down to 320, and then we'll write the code.
So at a certain point, it feels a little redundant, right, doing this image size, canvas size, over and over. So hopefully you've got those, um, those in there. If you don't have them all in there, that's okay. I'm going to move on because I need to add the code, and then we'll wrap up for the day. So the hard part, really, is designing these graphics. We spend all day designing two graphics. Well, 12 graphics. But um, then the code was pretty straightforward. So this, obviously, we could spend a lot of time designing this graphical asset. But let's say I've got them all into my folder, reading on my instructions. Then I've got to add the code, which looks very similar to the, um, to the icon. So I could save a little bit of typing, perhaps, by copying, um, by copying. But I won't copy this time because, notice, it's, it is different enough. We have splash source density. But notice here, port, because there's port in the horizontal one, I forget what horizontal, I think it's just H-O-R. So we've, this is how we're telling the app, use the portrait version, the vertical version, of the low DPI graphic. So back in Notepad, we've got our icon, icon graphics. On the next line then, we'll add splash that needs a source, and that needs a density. So just 
just like we did icon, but we're doing splash this time. We're going to add then the path to one of the example splash icons, add then the portrait LDPI, and then we can copy and paste that. So it's going to be the same sort of path, res Andro red, uh, res slash android slash splash. And we'll start with the small one, which is, uh, what's that? 320. Good. So we'll do splash 320.png. And then the difference on density is that we need to type port. It's the portrait LDPI. Now that line I can copy and paste five more times, and then do the next level up, 480, I think, and then port and DPI, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So we'll add those five, and then we need two more lines of code, which we'll do together, but go ahead and copy that line, and one, two, one, two, three, four, five. We want six in total. So all of the splash screen pings you created, you're going to reference them under source, of course, and then port, LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, etc. give you a moment to add those five references. The next two lines of code then say preference. We're going to add a preference, and we need name, splash screen, value screen. So we just need that. That's just one of those. That's the way it is. We need that. That's basically saying we're going to use a splash screen. And then the next line is interesting. Preference name, splash screen delay, value 10,000. We're going to display the splash screen for some amount of time. 10,000 milliseconds. 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. So 10,000 milliseconds is how many seconds? Ten seconds. We're going to display our splash screen for 10 seconds, which is a huge amount of time. No one's going to want to stare at your icon for 10 seconds, your splash screen for 10 seconds. But that's okay. Notice further what I'm saying here, which we'll do in a moment. Uh, notice you get a splash screen that lasts 10 seconds, which is unrealistic. We will add code so the splash screen is removed once the Cordova API loads. So once Cordova is ready, once we're able to use the camera or geolocation or all those cool things, then remove the splash screen. I'm just covering my bases. I don't want people to start to type, to start to start using my app before it's ready. My app is not ready until Cordova is ready. So when Cordova is ready, then we'll remove the splash screen, because then the splash screen's in the way the whole time. So we'll need to add the code in two places, in the XML file and then in the JavaScript. Oh, that's a mistake there. The JavaScript file. In the JavaScript file, we're going to say, hide the splash screen when we no longer need it. So I'm going to finish writing this in the config XML file I need a new preference with a name and a value. So 
preference name value. I need two of those actually. I'm not sure. Um, it works this way afterward, but it'll probably also work if this is first and then splash. It would make sense because we set the parameters first and then we show the splash screen, I guess. But it works this way, probably also works the other way. So the first preference here is that we're saying splash screen. And notice splash screen, capital S, capital splash, capital screen under name. And value is just screen. Preference splash screen. Value screen. Next one is splash screen delay. <coughs> Capital S, capital S, capital D, splash screen delay. And then the value in seconds. And we're going to make an outlandish 10 seconds, which is 10,000 milliseconds. The Cordova code must be ready within 10 seconds. It's very odd that it would not be ready in 10 seconds. And so this splash screen is going to prevent people from using your app for up to 10 seconds. We're going to then have another line of code in the JavaScript file that when the, when the Cordova API, when the Cordova code is ready, it will automatically cut it. It could be in two seconds, it could be in half a second, it could be in six seconds, who knows? Usually the device doesn't take that long to load the Cordova APIs, the Cordova code. But here I'm just making sure, don't let anyone use the app until Cordova is ready. So I'm going to save. I'm going to try it both ways. I'm going to show this in my device. I'm going to add the, the other line. I'm going to add it in a moment, but I just want to show you that after I, if it works, my splash screen should appear for 10 seconds, in 10 seconds, because I haven't added the other line. If that works, then I'm going to add the other line. I could obviously go and add the the Cordova ready line, but just for fun, I'm going to show the long version. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten seconds. No one's going to wait ten seconds to see that. But at least you saw my amazing splash screen. So you could do Cordova emulate if you want. I'm just showing you that's what it's going to look like if it worked. And then I have to further add the next line here. And this is a mistake, sorry about that. It should say edit your Kodika external JS file, your JavaScript file. And we're going to add this line of code in the on device ready. I forgot what that means. On device ready. Let's go back to our project folder into our www folder. Codica.external.js. Let's edit the JavaScript file in the www file. We've got this line of code at the very top. Basically, all the apps need this. Document.addEventListener. Remember, we said um, basically we're waiting for the event of device ready. Device ready happens when the Cordova code is ready to use. Once the Cordova device ready event fires, this is paying attention for that, it's listening. Once it fires and this sees it or hears it, then it's going to run the on device ready function. On device ready doesn't really do anything, we made it do an alert. But now we're gonna make it hide the splash screen because we're ready for the app to run. So on my handout, we're going to write navigator, 
dot splash screen dot hide. So after alert line seven, navigator dot splash screen dot hide open close parentheses. <coughs> We've got the object of the navigator, which is basically the app, and then the object of the splash screen, which is what we're showing uh, on the config file. And then we've got the method or the command, hide it, hide the splash screen. Hide the splash screen when device is ready. If device is ready is when Cordova is ready. Hmm? Splash screen, splash screen, yes. So I would have seen it didn't work when it lasted 10 seconds. Navigator dot splash screen. Right here, I don't know how long it's going to last. On a particular device, it may last two seconds. Not On another, seconds. two seconds. <laughs> it might be three, it might be half a second. Who knows? It's going to depend on the device. But now it's not going to last the whole 10 seconds. Now, in this case, you sort of have a, uh, a check that when the splash screen goes away, you know the app is ready. Device ready was triggered. Save. Make sure you save both config and Kodika file. I'm going to emulate it again. What's that? So here we go. It's gonna. It's about to launch. One, two. Oh, there it is. So it only displayed for a short amount of time because the emulator uh, didn't need that long to get the the Cordova API code ready. So that's what I have in my handout designing the apps. Notice it's not a lot of instruction, but we spend a lot of time on designing the graphics, and that's just a fraction of what we would do for like a real kind of app. Then the code itself is not that complicated. It's a little redundant. Now we will now, now notice the splash screen only shows as long as necessary. Let me show that again. I'm going to Going to launch the app again. One, two, oh, before two seconds. Yes. Mine doesn't happen the second time if I reload the app. What you have to do, see, mine wouldn't do it also. I'm going to reload the app again. Doesn't do it. What I have to do is I go to the app here, I tap and hold it, and I go to App Info. Okay. Force stop because it's still in memory, therefore, it's not going to load brand new. Okay. Force stop, and then that's going to be like launching it for the first time. I launch it again, it's the first time, so it's going to run through all of the code again. So now at this point, this project that I've got right here has a fully functional um, skeleton in a sense. For this particular project, it has all of the plugins, it's got a config file set up that locks it into portrait mode and other little tweaks. It's got our project from last month, the index file, the dir file. It's got the cordova.js javascript in the index file and the dir file. And this all works and such. Still st stuff to, to do in the project. That's what we'll spend some time this, this month, of course. But then what we wrapped up with today is adding a cool icon, adding a splash screen, 
And so now the basics of this project are set up. We've got more experience using the command prompt. Hopefully we're remembering Cordova emulate or Cordova run. We haven't noticed we don't have to do all the time Cordova create or Cordova add platform. We just do that at the very beginning to begin a project. We're, we're past that already, a day or two. We've got a project. We just keep using our project within this folder. The whole project is right here. This whole project currently is about 33 megabytes. When it's installed on the device, it seems to be about 10% of that. It's 3 megabytes. But the whole project is this. So you can take it from your com our computer to your computer, friend's computer, this is your project. And that's good and bad. The whole project is in this folder, that's great. I can just take it with me. The bad thing about it is the whole project is this folder. Therefore, if you lose this folder, damage this folder, your whole project's gone, probably. So it's a good idea to make backups. The easiest way to make a backup, notice on my flash drive, well, I forgot my flash drive today, but notice on my flash drive, I've got copies with different dates. That's one way to make a backup. It's not the best way to make a backup, because if the whole drive fails, all those backups also failed. A better way is that I've got two flash drives. One flash drive that is my current working in progress flash drive. When I'm done for the day, copy that to my other flash drive and keep that safe somewhere. So that's a backup right there. But if you keep both of those flash drives, let's say, in your house, and if your house burns down, you lose both backups. Okay, so what's another backup? Backup of a backup on the cloud. What about copying this to a Google Drive folder, or a Dropbox folder, or a OneDrive folder? What about cloud storage, saving this on cloud storage? That's what I've got. So a backup of a backup on my cloud storage. All of these things are free. You can get a free OneDrive account, you get like 10 gigabytes for free. You get Dropbox, you get like 5 gigabytes for free. You get Google Drive, you get like 16 gigabytes for free. So um, there is the pros and cons of having your cloud storage, of course. But if you're saving, if you're making, if you're serious about backups, you're going to make copies of your project. I've been making a copy every day that I work here. So then I have a previous one from last week in case I want to go back to it. But I also want to make copies elsewhere in, in cloud storage, for example. And if I lose my flash drives, I have a copy of my cloud storage. So how many of you currently use Dropbox? How many of you currently use OneDrive? Google Drive? Alright, so you, if you don't, if you didn't raise your hand, you need to look into them. They're all free, and you're able to save your work there. And so right now our app, obviously, as I said at the beginning of the course, we're not going to make the next Instagram. We're not going to make the next Facebook. We're not going to make the next great, you know, the next great American app. We're going to learn this stuff so that in you, when you have this knowledge about, now I know how to make an app that can take a photo. Well, how can you use that? Now I know how to make an app that can save database stuff. How can I use that? So we're making this unofficial SDCE app that will be able to save database info and driving directions and that stuff. How can you apply that to your own app? So. We're going to end the day and have some lab time. I already copied my project into the network folder in case you want to copy. At a certain point, though, I'm going to stop giving you my copy because you're going to need your own project. By the end of this course, my dream is that everyone uploads your own project, if you want to, up to Amazon with your own color palette and your own icon and your own name. But I'll be giving you my project as we go along, but eventually, month three, I'll stop giving you my project because I want you to upload yours. Um, so to show people off, hey everyone, come to Amazon and download my app. I made it. My name's on it. My graphics. I made it. So that'll be next month, of course. But for today, we're done. And when we come back on uh, Thursday, we're going to now start to explore more. I keep talking about we're going to take a photo and all that cool stuff. We're going to do that. We're going to see how we write the code so that now that our app is basically done in a skeletal sense, for fun, we'll say, well, what if on our art screen there's a button to take a photo? How do we do that? We're going to do that when we come back on Thursday. Maybe we want, well, I want to share this class on Twitter. How do we do that? We can do that also via 
Cordova and that whole um, uh, framework. We're going to be doing that, and then another database saving class info and such. So we're getting there, but it's a long process, three months long, and so it's going to take a little while. Any general questions? Um, you know, uh, when we were putting that stuff in Splash and Python, before those were just like any name we wanted to use, are those actually required names? The only Splash thing. No, these these are not required here. The one that is required is line thirty-seven. That should be screen. Well, I mean, uh, the icon. Yes. And... Those can be anything. Yep. Right. Icon splash. Yeah. We can call it logo. We can call it splash screen. Sure. They should just they should just match. Well, actually, they might not need to match. I could call this splash, and I could call this one splash screen. I guess it'll work because we're telling it use this one as the MDPI version. That's what matters. These you shouldn't change, port LDPI and HDPI. Those you don't change, but your file names you can change. I think you'll be okay. So that's it for the moment. We'll have a little lab time when we come back next time. We'll do more coding and Android.